Just like the title says, this video is going to be about the simplest way to get rich that anyone can do through investing. I like to keep it super simple and not overcomplicate things, and the simplest way to invest and become rich is through index funds. These aren't simply stocks, these aren't simply bonds, this is not even life insurance or even cryptocurrency. Huh, when was the last time crypto was a thing? Those other ways can make you super rich, there is no doubting that. But in the long term and on average, index fund investing can beat 99% of individual investors as well as 95% of hedge fund managers managing mutual funds and other people's investments. A few disclaimers up front, this is not financial advice, I am not a financial advisor. My name is Ver and this is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am not sponsored in any way and I receive no financial incentive to post about these topics and investments in this video. I also want to say that the only way that this will work is if you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, invest over the long term, don't invest money that you need in the short term, have high interest debt paid off, and you have an emergency fund worth three to six months of your monthly expenses. The emergency fund was there just in case you missed my point about smashing the like button. That's because if something does happen and the button is not smashed, something could possibly happen and you would need that emergency fund. I'm totally kidding. I'm just saying that you do need an emergency fund in case something does happen, but also liking and subscribing to this video will definitely help out my little channel grow. It'll also help me post more videos since I do talk about personal finances and investing with my own little sprinkled experience on there, and that will hopefully reach more people out there on YouTube. I personally invest in index funds and I hope you would also consider them to be part of your financial portfolio. With that, let's get into the video. You're probably familiar with phrases like, I should have invested in Apple in the 90s. Well, actually, since my viewers are all millennials, maybe not that. Or, I should have invested in Tesla in 2010. Nah, no, maybe not that either. Regardless, you as an individual can invest in things like stocks. The difference between investing in stocks individually, like Apple and Tesla, is that an index fund is a group of investments that you can invest your money into, or you own a portion of each of those investments that make up that entire fund. Here's an example. Say there's 100 businesses where each of those businesses is worth $100. You invest $100 in just one of those businesses. But say that business basically goes down the drain or fails. You now have an investment that is worthless. Contrary to that, say instead you invest that $100 in one piece of each of those 100 businesses where you own just 1% of each and every business. If that same business fails, the average value of your fund or your index that you invested in those 100 businesses just goes down on an average price of those 100 businesses. Also, that one business could be replaced. This concept of that business being able to be replaced in those 100 businesses is the concept of self-cleansing. Index funds track certain groups of investments, such as the S&P 500, which are the top 500 companies in the U.S. stock market. You can own a piece of each and every single one of those 500 stocks for the low price of $303.92. Say you don't want to just own a piece of those top 500 companies, but all U.S. stocks. There's an index fund for that. Say you want to invest in the international market, all stocks outside of the U.S. stock market. There is also an index fund for that. Say that you haven't destroyed the like button. There's no index fund for that, but you should definitely do that. Say you want to invest in bonds. There's an index fund for that. Real estate. There's also that too. There's a wide range of index funds that range from big to small that measure specific markets in the U.S. stock market or international markets. The list goes on. Now that we know what an index fund is, let's talk about why you should invest in index funds and here are some of the advantages if you invest in them. So the first advantage of investing in index funds is diversification. You remember my small example that I just gave a moment ago about those 100 businesses that you invest in? Let's just say instead of investing in all 100 businesses or just one business, you invested in just 20 individual businesses. Even if one of those businesses goes down in value or down to zero, that will greatly affect your overall value of your portfolio. But on the other hand, let's say you own one piece of those 100 businesses similar to the S&P 500, one piece of those 500 companies, which only three of those top 500 account for only 2% of the whole fund. A few stocks going down or up will not have a huge effect on the overall value of that index. Ups and downs in the market will have minimal effect on the price, but you will take full advantage of the whole entire market 
as it goes up, as it goes down, and on average, it has gone up in value at a 7% rate of return adjusted for inflation with dividends reinvested. Another factor to consider when investing in an index fund is the concept of self-cleansing, which means that when a company is not well fitted to be in that index or in that fund anymore, it will be booted from the index and then another one comes in to replace it. This keeps the index clean and assures that continued market growth. The second advantage to investing in index funds are the low fees. Now it's been a couple months or maybe even a year when a lot of brokerages started doing zero free commission trading. Back in the day, you had to pay a fee to buy or sell investments. These ate a huge amount into portfolio values. However, index funds, on the other hand, since they're simple to put together, they track indices that already match a market like the S&P 500, all US stocks, international stocks, the list goes on. The price to manage these funds is fairly low and those profits go to you. Another phrase for this is a passively managed fund. But what are you gonna do with that money if you don't invest it in an index fund. After paying for your monthly needs, are you going to go buy a new car? Are you going to buy a bunch of coffee at Starbucks? Are you going to buy a pair of Gucci slippers? Or worse, will you just have it sitting in a bank account that has no interest rate so that money grows at no rate of return? Instead of doing those things, you can pay a low expense ratio or a low fee to one, beat inflation at a rate of 2% per year, prevent yourself from buying things that don't make you money, and buy things that actually do make you money, which are index funds for the low fee of 0.04% annually. Now, aside from index funds, you may also have heard about mutual funds. This is the opposite of index funds because mutual funds are managed by professional stock pickers that look something like this, or something like this, or maybe even this. I'm totally kidding about that last one. That's Graham Stephan. He's a personal finance YouTuber and real estate investor, and he actually invests in index funds as well. Point is the additional overhead and the higher fees to invest in a mutual fund or even individual stocks comes at a price and having a lower expense ratio can really go a long way when you start investing your money. It's all that without even the guarantee of actually beating the market. Remember earlier when I mentioned 99% of individual investors and 95% of hedge fund managers? This leads me to the third advantage, and that is a higher rate of return in the long term. God, try saying that three times as fast. Higher rate of return in the long term. Higher rate of return in the long term. Higher rate of return in the long term. There are many investors out there, and when I say many, I mean many. 99% of investors go out there and invest in individual stocks. They go on Wall Street bets on Reddit. They talk about Tesla on battery day because it's gonna go to the moon. That makes significantly less than index fund investors. There are many studies out there that prove 92 to 95% of portfolio managers cannot outperform a market index over a 15 year period. These figures are even worse for average investors, but no one wants to be average. So just know that there are statistics for the average individual investor as well as the professionals. The fourth and last advantage about investing in index funds is that it's super easy to do. I used to invest in individual stocks when I started investing, totally trying to time the market. Buy low, sell high was a phrase that I did not get and I wasn't in the position to do it when I started investing at all. I did have some points of profit where I did invest in a stock where it started at a low point and then it appreciated to a higher value and then I sold for a profit. But I also had a lot of instances where I would buy a stock at a high price and then I would see it go down and then panic and then sell. That concept of buying high and selling low was something that I did a lot. And that's why I am just an average person. I'm not a professional stock picker. And that is why I decided to start investing in index funds. I can't buy and sell stocks or investments that consistently beat the market like that top 1% does. Short term, you might find some people that are able to be like, hey, I bought Tesla before the split. Hey, I bought Amazon when it was only $1,000. But it is really hard to pick those winning stocks. And I don't have time to wake up at 6 a.m read the stock charts, not smash the like button, and read the news to know what the latest information on the financial market is. That is why I do smash the like button and know investing in index funds is as simple as opening an account, putting in some money, choosing a fund, and that is it. What do I personally do? I read the book, A Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins, and a lot of the principles I talk about in this video are the same principles that I learned in that book. The book made investing in index funds simple 
and it's a path to wealth. There are many methods to investing in index funds, and the most common is the three fund portfolio. What is the three fund portfolio? The first fund in the three fund portfolio that I like is VT Sachs, which is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. Remember earlier when I said you can invest in the top 500 companies in the US? You can also invest in all of them, and this is that fund. Vanguard has VT Sachs. There are other companies like Fidelity and Charles Schwab that have their own equivalent funds. There's one fund I think on Fidelity called FZ Rocks, which is an index fund that tracks the same total stock market, but it has zero expense fees. The second index fund in the three fund portfolio is called VTIX. VTIX? VTIX? With the first index fund, you have all US stocks. With this VTIX index fund, you have everything else. And the third index fund in the three fund portfolio is the total bond market index fund, or Vibitilix. Vibitilix? These all sound like Elon Musk's future children. Anyways, the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund tracks all bonds. So with the three fund portfolio, you have all US stocks, you have all international stocks, and you have all bonds, which essentially gives you the broadest amount of diversification in your index fund portfolio. Since I'm a young guy, well, still fairly young, I solely invest in VT Sachs, and here's why. The first reason is time. Since I'm young, like I just mentioned, at least you know, young enough, I have time on my side to invest in the total US stock market and beat out 99% of individual investors and 95% of hedge fund managers. I also want to take advantage of that average rate of return despite the ups and downs in the market because in the long term, it's still positive. The second reason is diversification. I said I only invest in VT Sachs and not VTIX or Vibitilix. The reason for that is because internationally speaking, VT Sachs is made up of all US stocks and all US companies, or at least majority of them, are global. Being that the world is technologically connected and a lot of business is done overseas, having ownership or stocks in an index that is with a US company has that exposure to international markets some way, shape, or form at least this point in time. Also with Vibitalix or the bond market, I don't invest too much in those because like my first point, I have time. I'm okay with having a high risk tolerance because over time there may be ups and downs, but when you invest in bonds, those are a little bit more stable and I want the fastest rate of growth at this time. Third reason is because of the low fees. Like I mentioned earlier, an advantage of index funds is the low fees. VT Sachs has an expense ratio of 0.04%. So any money that you put in there, you're only charged not even a percent on the money that is invested in that fund. That is super low compared to if you were to continually trade individual stocks or even mutual funds which are managed by professional managers. One last note I wanna mention about investing in VT Sachs is since VT Sachs composes of all US stocks, there are some companies in the US stock market that pay dividends to their investors. Being that that's the case, every quarter when these companies release their dividends to investors, I take that money and reinvest it to buy more VT Sachs. In Vanguard, where I invest in VT Sachs and the Vanguard funds, is a setting where you can just choose to reinvest your dividends to keep on growing Growing your money. In summary, investing in index funds is easy to set up, they have low fees, and in the long run, on average, you can become rich. Slow and steady wins the race. You can just do the three fund portfolio so you have the broadest set of diversification, you have low fees, and since they're fairly uncorrelated markets, you will be very stable. You yourself can get started today just like Baby Yoda here, and he actually happens to be holding the book that I mentioned earlier, The Simple Path to Wealth. You gotta start them young, you know. Well, actually, Baby Yoda's 50 years old, so, well, just when they're young. With all that said, thank you everyone for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, you know to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell. But also, if you think anyone will get any value out of this video, please share them with your friends, your family, or really anyone, like I said, if it'll help them. It really helps out my channel grow and bring you more content just like this on personal finance or just anything in my experience that will help my viewers. Here's my Instagram handle. You can find me there. I post from time to time. You can also DM me there some puppy pictures because I'm really into those. Also, there's two links in the description below to Robinhood and 
Webull where you could get started in investing. If you deposit $100 on Webull, I believe you could get two stocks where one of those stocks is valued up to now $1,600. And you can also invest in index funds there. Let me know in the comments below what investments that you have in your portfolio, if they're index funds or individual stocks. Also, let me know what stocks you get from Robinhood and Webull. With the knowledge that you gained in this video, let's get to work. Right, right, right.